اهلا بكم مشاهدينا الكرام الى هذه الحلقه من مستقبل الطاقه هذه ملفاتنا تحول الطاقه الهوى المتسعه بين دول الشمال والجنوب وكوب 28 فرصه دوليه لحوار واقعي بعيدا عن المثاليه بحسب امين عام منتدى الطاقه الدولي عملية التحول في الطاقة هي ليست أمرا مستجدا بل هي عملية بدأها عالمنا منذ نحو ثلاثة قرون متحولا من حرق الخشب وكتل حيوية أخرى إلى الفحم ومن بعده إلى النفط وثم الغاز واليوم الطاقات المتجددة لكن ما يميز عملية التحول اليوم عما سبق هو حاجة العالم لخفض الانبعاثات بالتزامن مع نمو استهلاكه من الطاقة وهذه الحاجة الضرورية هي ما تم ترجمتها إلى مستهدفات صافي صفر انبعاثات والتي يجب أن يصلها العالم بحلول عام 2050 بحسب مستهدفات اتفاقية باريس للمناخ لكن التقلبات الحادة التي عاشتها جميع أسواق الطاقة خلال السنوات الثلاث الماضية كشفت النقاب عن التعقيدات الكامنة والمتأصلة في عملية تحول الطاقة اليوم حيث قد يبدو أن هناك تضاربا أحيانا ما بين الأهداف المتعلقة بمكافحة التغير المناخي من جانب وما بين أمن الطاقة وكلفته من جانب آخر وما بين التنمية الاقتصادية من ناحية أخرى وما زاد من تعقيدات هذه المسألة التوترات الجيوسياسية وما يصحبها من تشظي تدفقات التجارة العالمية وسلاسل الإمداد هذا بالإضافة إلى مسألة تمويل هذا التحول والقدرة للوصول إلى هذا التمويل إلى جانب كلفته خاصة في بيئة ذات نسب فائدة مرتفعة هذه المعطيات والمستجدات فتحت المجال مؤخرا أمام ظهور أصوات جديدة معظمها من دول الجنوب النامية تحمل معها أفكارا ووجهات نظر جديدة تجادل وتحاور وتناقش سردية دول الشمال المتقدمة التي تطرح نمطا واحدا ومسارا واحدا فصلته هي على مقاسها وتعمل في آخر عقدين أن تفرضه على دول العالم كافة هذا الاختلاف في وجهات النظر حول تحول الطاقة بات يعرفه بعض الخبراء بالفجوة أو الهوة الجديدة الفاصلة ما بين دول الشمال والجنوب الاختلاف كبير إلى درجة أن حتى مصطلح التحول العادل الذي يتشدق به الجميع له مفاهيم متعددة بحسب كل طرف وكل دولة ولكن ما هي وجهات النظر الجديدة هذه التي قدمتها دول الجنوب مؤخرا وكيف غيرت النقاش حول ملف تحول الطاقة وهل يفتح مسارات ذلك مسارات جديدة للوصول إلى صافي صفر خلال العقود القليلة المقبلة منتدى الطاقة الدولي و S&P Global Commodity Insights أقاما عددا من اللقاءات والاجتماعات في العديد من الدول حول العالم خلال الأشهر الماضية حول هذا الموضوع وأصدروا تقريرا هذا الأسبوع حول أبرز الآراء ووجهات النظر المختلفة في ملف تحول الطاقة حول هذا الموضوع استضفت أمين عام منتدى الطاقة الدولي جوزيف ماك مونجل وسألته بداية حول كيف ظهرت هذه الهوة الجديدة ما بين دول الشمال والجنوب في وجهة النظر حول ملف تحول الطاقة Well, Nasser, it's great to be with you again on the program and uh, this is a really important topic and especially this uh, particular issue of the north-south divide on, on energy transition and Quite simply, I think the voice of the global South feels like they haven't been given due consideration in these global climate uh, discussions. Um, developing countries believe that they're not responsible for the climate crisis and that they should be uh, uh, able to develop their own uh, resources, including hydrocarbons, where appropriate for uh, economic development. Um, And as you know, you know, the word energy transition means something different in the global south. It means, you know, transitioning from, you know, wood and biomass to maybe LPG or in some cases from uh, no energy to any kind of energy. So 
the the concept i think of a wholesale global transition from traditional bio traditional biomass to renewable energy without taking into consideration local conditions is really impractical, I think, um, mm. in many of these situations. And so the emergence of this new uh, north-south uh, divide has really fostered, I think, an increasingly sharp debate, as we saw at the last uh, climate uh, COP meeting in, in Sharm el-Sheikh. And um, the debate focuses mainly over the cost and timing of the energy transition and, and compatibility with other priorities such as economic growth. ولكن كيف اثرت احداث السنتين الماضيتين في سرديه دول الشمال والتي تعتبر ان تحول الطاقه العالمي لا بد ان يسلك مسارا واحدا وبوصفه واحده تنطبق على الجميع. Well that's right. I mean developments I think over the last two years have demonstrated that the transition is more complicated I think than than what we previously thought. You know, we're transforming a hundred trillion dollar global economy to a decarbonized energy system in 25 years. And that's a massive uh, undertaking. Yeah. And so I think expectations of a, a, a linear global transition have really been shaken um, as climate goals have to now coexist with other priorities, such as energy security, which is now very much a priority for many uh, countries around the world. Uh, and of course, as we talk about the global south, energy access and affordability. Of course. And and really, the energy crisis over the last two years have have pointed to the need to, I think, develop a multi-dimensional approach that is inclusive mm. of different situations and starting points um, all over the world. أنت تدعو جو إلى مقاربة متعددة الزوايا في التعاطي مع تحول الطاقة. ماذا تعني بذلك تحديدا؟ Yeah, so a multi-dimensional approach is really inclusive, I think, of different situations and, as I said, different starting points of all regions of the world. And um, it, it reflects, I think, a diversity of policy approaches and is really, I think, more equitable than maybe a one-size-fits-all mm. uh, approach. Uh, for example, in Africa, 600 million people have uh, lack access to electricity. And the priority from... For these people is to get access to reliable power and, and affordable power. Um, so if advanced economies burn carbon to develop their economies uh, in the absence of a viable uh, alternative, so will also the, mm. the developing economies. And so the energy transition may not ha it may have started in the global north, but it really has to go through the global south. And to achieve that, it has to be truly global uh truly global and and we really have to attend to the energy needs of the developing world نسمع الكثير عن التحول العادل لكن يبدو ان كل طرف يفهم هذا المصطلح بشكل مختلف عن فهم الطرف الاخر حدثنا اكثر عن هذا التباين في مفهوم التحول العادل That's right this was a very sort of hot topic and I think Um, brought to bear that just transition means different things to different people, depending on what part of the world you're in. And we did, uh, in preparation for this report, held uh, dialogue sessions all over the world, from Africa to Latin America to Europe and the U.S. And so in the United States, for example, it really refers to environmental and employment needs of, of the poor and minority communities for you know, quite often right around energy producing uh, assets. And it also means, you know, providing alternative um, opportunities in communities that are uh, dependent on uh, fossil fuel development uh, as a source of, of jobs. Um, in Europe, I think a just transition means recognizing and addressing different, uh, uh, among different regions uh, in terms of energy production and consumption. But In the developing world, a just transition means economic development and poverty alleviation due to mm. considerations in energy poverty and also investment decisions. So I think a better understanding of these varying concepts of justice in energy requires a, a really a broad global perspective that encompasses the energy industry, uh, workers leveling up and advanced societies and industrialization i think and and access again in mm -hmm. in the global south and you know quite often at energy conferences that you and i attend we hear a lot about 
uh, the word world word stranded assets. Mm. And I think in the global south, they're focused on stranded lives and, and making that the priority. من الواضح أن جل النقاش حول ملفي التغير المناخي وتحول الطاقة يتمحور حول من سيدفع ويتحمل التكلفة في نهاية المطاف بالتالي ما هي أبرز وجهات النظر التي رصدها تقريركم في هذا الصدد؟ Well, uh, we had a lot of interesting uh, ideas and points of view on, on this idea of financing the transition. In developing markets, you know, investors are, are seeking clean energy investments, but there, there is now sort of a shortage of commercially attractive uh, projects. Um, the, the other development that we had, of course, was this U.S. Uh, Inflation Reduction Act, which has been welcomed by U.S. domestic and some international companies. And it's estimated that when all is said and done, this is basically a investment in clean energy of up to about 370 billion U.S. dollars. So there's no doubt that there will be enormous technology transfer opportunities that will come out of the U.S. policy for the transition. And I think that will really benefit um, you know, not just uh, the rest of the world, but especially the global south and making, you know, commercially uh, making these technologies commercially available at affordable uh, uh, prices. Mm. But really, one of the biggest challenges to financing the clean energy uh, projects is really uh, risk premiums and the high cost of capital, particularly in the global south. And in these projects, investors, uh, investor risks are prim primarily policy driven. And, you know, so companies have really limited experience and tools uh, available to assess and manage risk in a business environment heavily influenced by policy uncertainties rather than commercial uh, uh, market forces. Mm -hmm. So unless new approaches are developed, I think investors will continue to apply sort of high hurdle rates and uh, constraining energy investments, particularly in the global south, where it's really, really uh, badly needed. كيف كان تجاوب الجهات التي تحدثتم إليها حيال الدور الذي سيلعبه النفط والغاز في مزيج الطاقة مستقبلا؟ Well, of course, this is uh, a controversial topic, uh, and it was so also in, in our dialogues. But I do think there was generally a consensus, a wide consensus in our dialogues that oil and gas will continue to play a critical role in providing the world Uh, energy, just not just now, but well into the future. Uh, you know, the truth is, is that oil and gas accounts for about half of the world's energy needs today. And without it, the world would indeed be uh, a lot poorer. Um, we all agree that emissions from oil and gas must fall significantly over the next uh, few decades if we're to meet these climate goals that we've set from the Paris Agreement. But it, we can't lose sight of, ex uh, of competing priorities for both affordable and reliable energy. And I think this is why in our discussions, there was a lot of discussion about uh, the massive investment needed in scaling up of decarbonization technologies, whether it be uh, carbon capture use and storage, uh, direct air capture, which is getting a lot of attention mm. these days, and, and the circular carbon economy that um, I think there's a lot of investment and momentum behind, particularly in, in the Gulf region. أخذا بعين الاعتبار كل ما ناقشناه جو ما الذي يجب أن يحدث في الطريق نحو كوب 28 لردم الهوة في مواقف دول الشمال والجنوب وإحداث تقدم واختراق في اجتماعات دبي نهاية العام؟ Well, I think COP 28 we've got a great opportunity to have a very pragmatic uh, discussion and um, my hope is that we will focus on progress over perfection mm. <laughs> i think so many of the past discussions have been about you know achieving perfect one size fits all solutions and i think the last two years has shown us that uh, we we have other competing priorities and there are different starting points and um, roadmaps for different parts of the world I'm I'm very enthused that uh, my friend Dr. Sultan is is the president of this COP. I think it's it's uh, going to be refreshing to have a CEO in charge that you know has uh, you know you interview a lot of uh, CEOs mm -hmm. in your job and and you know CEOs focus on metrics and deliverables and mm -hmm. so therefore I think we're going to see a lot more progress on this financing uh, solution and addressing this north south 
uh, divide. And uh, again, I think, um, as I like to say, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully have more, uh, uh, when we come out of this COP, there'll be a lot more progress made um, and, and we won't focus as much on perfect solutions, which, which in the end may be elusive. نتوقف الآن مع فاصل قصير نتابع بعده في مستقبل الطاقة فرصة كبرى لدول الخليج بأن تصبح مراكز عالمية لإعادة تدوير المعادن